As you are doing your holiday shopping, you will often wish that you had a gift card for the exact amount you need so you don't have to worry about wasting a little bit of money or buying something you don't need just to use up the last bit. With Flues, you can buy gift cards in the exact amount you need on the spot, including tax and tips for restaurants. Download the app via my referral code GeoBreeze Travel and start earning cash back every day with Flues. Thank you to Flues for partnering with this episode of the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast. Welcome to the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast, a show for anyone wanting to level up their travel hacking lifestyle. I'm your host, Julia Menez. I'm a travel hacker, coach, speaker, Filipina-American ENTJ who loves solid travel gear and using shortcuts on spreadsheets. On this show, I'm on a mission to bring you travel hackers from all walks of life to help you level up your travel hacking game. We dive into credit cards, miles, points, strategy, mindset, and the secrets behind how to travel the world for next to no cost. So let's get hacking. We had a budget for hotels and going out to eat and the equipment and everything and most everyone got the school credit card to use and i was using mine and get reimbursed and you know the the people in the office were like you know you can use the school credit card i'm like i i know it's okay I'm, i'd like to use mine and so you know whether it was a big you know 10 hotel rooms for a weekend or whatever that was that was awesome i i probably didn't utilize that enough but that's you know those are all great ways to do it hey there points people you just heard a clip from zach hood Zach was a full-time teacher and nonprofit director and is the founder of the popular award travel tool, Travel Freely. In this episode, Zach and I discuss some ideas for how to earn more points, even if you are on a teacher's salary or nonprofit salary, and you don't have the ability to pump hundreds of thousands of dollars of spend through your credit cards. We also discuss some of the great features of the Travel Freely app, which you can find in the show notes. One of the best ways to earn a lot more points with each purchase this quarter is with the Chase Freedom Flex card which earns 5x on Walmart and PayPal in fourth quarter 2021. Additionally, there is a special promotion this quarter to earn another 4x bonus points on your top spend category, which could be travel, dining, home improvement, streaming, gas, drugstores, or more. That means you could potentially earn up to nine times the points without inflating your budget. Also, the Chase Freedom Flex has no annual fee. Check out the link in the show notes if you are interested in learning more about this card, and feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at GeoBreeze Travel to learn more about the 9x stack. Remember, never, ever, ever apply for cards through Google, always use a friend or creator's links, and now on with the show. Hey, Zach, welcome to the GeoBreeze Travel podcast. Hey, Julia, thanks for having me. Of course, we are so excited to have you here today. As the founder of Travel Freely, which thank you so much has been a fantastic sponsor of the podcast. But before we get into how you made Travel Freely, what is Travel Freely and all of that, tell us a little bit about your background. How did you even get started with the entire world of points and miles? <laughs> I'd like to think I'm pretty normal in terms of my background of getting started just really, really loved traveling from an early age and wanted to figure out how I could do as much as possible and had the chance to go on some cool trips with my family. I played some tennis early on as a junior tennis player and kind of that forced me out of my normal routines and get to meet people from different places. And so that was, you know, kind of where the travel bug came. And then as I got into my twenties, just how in the heck can I do more of this? And I I was teaching at my old school, making like super, super low salary. And that was motivating to try to figure out how I could actually do this without the budget that uh, was needed. And so I think like most people, I actually had a friend that had uh, gotten a few credit cards and bonuses. And he was the like the risk taker of, of our group of just going for deals and seeing what happens, ask questions later. And so he got me into my first credit card. Uh, bonus. And it was like, felt too good to be true almost. Like I didn't realize how easy it was and just putting regular expenses on there that I, that I had, and I didn't even have that big of a budget at the time or monthly expenses. And it, and it worked out and that, that got me hooked into um, trying to figure out how to do this more and more. And I think from an early age, I was also like a deal finder and that trying to find like the inside track on something, whether it was like baseball cards or signing up for this random golfing group where you got free golf clubs that were super expensive and writing a letter to the people and doing that kind of thing. So I've always looked out for like, what what's the cool way to get good deals? And I'm, I'm very lucky to have found it with travel. 
Sounds great. So when you first started getting into the game, were you one of those people who was like, oh, okay, my friends look kind of crazy. Maybe I'll get one card. Or were you like, yeah, dude, let's get five. Let's sign up for five cards all at once. Which track were you? Definitely the first guy. I was like a younger brother watching my brother like overspend stuff to like have cool things for his car and you know, things that were temporary and my parents telling me, look what he's doing, you know, you got to save your money. And so I was a saver and I actually ended up on the, on the ride home from like middle school with my mom every day, we would listen to Dave Ramsey and I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, which is where good old Dave is from. And so like, I would hear all these stories and, you know, obviously credit card debt was one of them. And so when my friend um, told me about the credit card, I, I mean, I'd, still have i think the email records i looked up actually the other day like i responded to him because he forwarded me hey here's a great deal and i said there's there's no way that's a great deal and then you know there's 10 more emails back and forth just like this is this is not what happens you don't get that it's it's going to be impossible to get the value there's going to be all these fees and I, you know i just had no idea so that first card was like my experiment and you know, everything did work out, but then I think I took almost like a step back after that first card to try to figure out like, how did that actually happen? And how did I get to Europe? And how was that so easy? And then got a little more like methodical with it. And thanks to, you know, the, the blogs that, you know, this is, that was about 10 years ago. So it was not that well known at the time. So like finding some blogs to kind of figure out well, this is real. There's other people doing this. This actually won't affect my credit. This is like an unbelievable secret and especially for someone that loves to travel. So I I did that first card, took a step back, looked at what was possible, like kind of like that part of my personality, like over preparing, like just trying to make sure everything, all the questions are answered and I know what's going to happen. And then kind of like having more of a methodical, okay, I'll do this again. Let's see if that happens. So it was it was almost like the second and third card were about as careful as the first card, just because I wanted to just be super clear that you know these fees weren't going to come or something strange was going to happen. So yeah, definitely slow, slow at the start for sure. Were you a math teacher? What were you teaching at this time? Good question. I I loved math growing up, but in terms of what I was teaching, I was working in the counseling office. I was coaching tennis. And I was uh, coaching some or teaching some like seventh grade history geography from time to time. So there, there isn't too much of a correlation to like my mind working with the credit cards necessarily. It was more of a means to the end of the travel. Like, this is where I want to go. Like, I, I would love to go to this place and this place and this place. And I'll put in the time to figure out if this is possible. For sure. So one of the main problems that I hear from people, especially if you have a teacher salary, is how should I look about meeting these minimum spends? Because those numbers can look really big. If you have to spend $3,000 in three months, or if you're going for business credit cards, it can be up to $15,000 in three months to get those sign-up bonuses, which you definitely don't want to miss. So what were some of your strategies to meet those sign-up bonuses and get enough points for all of your travels while you were on a teacher's salary? Yeah, that's that's a, a great question because I think that's definitely what a lot of people think about. And sometimes they don't even jump in and try it because they think they can't hit some of those spending. So, you know, I think the first thing was just be realistic with my expenses. Like the, the funny thing is it, it forced me to like create a budget and actually know what I was spending on a monthly basis. And then what I found was that I could actually you know, pay some bills that were monthly bills on an annual basis. So I I would end up kind of pooling my spending together. So I was not at a place where there's a guaranteed X number of X amount of spending every month. It was more of like, what are my big expenses throughout the year? And when are they coming up? And when can I hit, you know, a three or $4,000 sign-up bonus? So that was, that was part of it. It was like, you know, my car insurance, paying that all at one time. And, you know, I, I had enough savings to not like have to space that payment out. So I could just pay that all at once. And that would be, you know, a good chunk of money. Or if I had a car repair, that was not part of the normal monthly thing. And that would go on it. But then there's other creative ways of like, 
if a friend is going to buy a car and say, can I put some of it on my credit card and you just write me a check? Or if friends are making a big purchase, if you can do that, and then with smaller things of like, anytime you go out to dinner and you're splitting the bill, you know, this is for easy ways to like split up payments with Venmo or whatever, you know, always offer to use your card to pay the, the bill, then everyone else gives you cash. That was, that was a huge tactic of trying to be the first to pay for the dinner and then everyone else gives you the cash back. And then let's see, there's, there's things like just buying some gift cards to stores that I would, you know, use a lot, whether it's groceries or gas stations or Amazon, uh, be able to just sort of buy that in advance to meet the spending. And then also just not being ashamed of getting those lower cards that, you know, like the Chase Freedoms that have a $500 spending requirement over three months. Like if that's what you can do, just go for it. That's better than getting a really bad card or, or not doing anything. So yeah, I think you got to think outside the box some with your own spending. And then also like who are some friends or family making some big purchases that wouldn't mind and you trust to do that. And then I feel like any answer to that question needs to have the caveat of like, you, you definitely have to trust that you're not going to overspend and that you're not going to just do something to get the points or miles. I know that probably nudges people, certain people more than others. But to me, it was, I just felt like it was the same as my debit card because I, I'm going to pay it off each month. It's going to come out of the checking account. So that was my mentality. But I know you need to be careful of just, oh, I can just grab that and then that'll hit a bonus too. Like, you know, you want to make sure you're being responsible with the spending. All of those are great tips. I especially love being able to front load all of your expenses, whether it's renters insurance, car insurance. If you know you have a home repair that should happen at some point, like you kind of need to get your roof replaced, it's not leaking yet, but it's about that time. You can time that for when you're signing up for a credit card. And you can even do that for things where it's not super intuitive that you can pay it all at once. Like for example, with groceries, people are like, well, you can't just buy all of this food at once. You kind of can if it's dry goods and you have enough pantry space Mm -hmm. to just store a whole bunch of oatmeal for a year. It's it's not going to go bad. But also you can buy grocery gift cards for the full year. If you have a pretty good handle on how much you're spending per month, then you can just buy gift cards to your local grocery store. Just make sure that you do not lose any of those cards because that completely negates everything if you lose a $200 grocery gift card. But as long as you can stay organized and disciplined, then you can reap so many benefits just by being creative with how you structure your spending. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think even those group purchases, I'm thinking back to like after college in the early days, like there's, there's quite a bit of those. Like if my roommates and I are going to Costco and buying a bunch of stuff for the next few months, like that's a several hundred dollars just, Make sure you're the one buying it and everyone else is paying you back. That's definitely a good way to get a chunk of, of spending. Oh, yeah. If you're in college and you're in a fraternity or sorority and you have events that you have to buy all of the food and drinks for, you be the one to buy those food and drinks and get mm-hmm. reimbursed. If you're at work where once this pandemic is over and you have party planning committee, be on that committee and buy all of the food and drink for that. If you are a parent for PTA at schools where you have to pay for things for the school, like different events, you can be the person who puts that on your credit card and gets reimbursed. I know that one of my coaching clients got to put playground equipment, like they had to buy new playground stuff for the school. And so they put it on their credit card, got reimbursed after they filled out the forms and were able to meet a couple of sign-up bonuses that way. So there are lots of opportunities where you can just raise your hand and say, I'll put it on my credit card. Just make sure you pay me back. And then as long as you can float the money while you're filling out those forms to get reimbursed, it's a, it's a pretty good way to meet those minimum spends. So as you were racking up these points, what was one of the first trips that you got to take on points and miles? So the very first trip was still potentially the best trip ever. And so I had this dream when I was, or not, well, yeah, dream when I was like right out of high school, I got the chance to go play tennis tournaments in Southern France, which was like amazing in and of itself. And that's where my travel bug like just kind of exploded. I didn't realize it at the time, but my like Enneagram personality is prone to love the country of France. So I don't really know why, but like why that's so specific, but it was so true with me. So I like, I was there right out of 
high school, I had studied some French, so that was really fun, a small town that weren't many tourists. And there was this small church at the top of the hill of the old town that overlooked the Mediterranean. And I like heard a voice in me say, like, this is where I want to propose one day. And so like probably 10 years later, when it became time to think about how how is a proposal going to happen, what's the idea and all that crept back. That was actually when my friend emailed me about this credit card deal that I went back and forth with him 10 times. That couldn't be true. The reason it was so such a big deal is because it was equivalent. The, the marketing said two round trip tickets to Europe. And so that was the card I used to get my wife and I over there. And that was where we like the proposal happened in that spot. And we had an awesome trip over there. And that was where like, I came back, you know, there's all this other stuff happening with getting engaged and what's happening next and all that. But then I was like, whoa, all right, how did that happen? And, you know, that was like this epic trip of a lifetime, but like, we didn't pay for the flight. So it was like, would have been the same as if we'd gone down the street almost. And so that was where the light bulbs came on for me in terms of the first trip. And then one of the most memorable ones for sure. Did you do any cool points and miles credit card sign-up bonus for the ring for the proposal? Good question. I definitely put it on a card. I put a lot of expenses for, you know, the wedding or whatnot on the card. Trying to remember if there's a specific card that was on, but I definitely used it to hit a bonus, I would say. Nice. Yeah, those, those weddings, once you put all of that on good points and miles cards, then you can get a honeymoon for free. If you are listening to this episode thinking, I want to travel like this, but I need step-by-step directions. One of the best ways to level up your travel game is by meeting with other points people. I give away a free one-on-one coaching call each week. The secret link to sign up is in my weekly newsletter, which goes out every Monday, and it's first come, first serve to grab the free call. Also, I host a masterclass and group coaching session each month. And if you would like to meet in person, I will be presenting at the ZorkFest conference in Las Vegas on December 17 and 18, which is all about travel and casino loyalty programs and perks. Hope to see you there. You can find links to sign up for the newsletter, monthly masterclass, ZorkFest, and Patreon, which gets you access to the masterclasses and also recordings of all past events in the show notes. This week's Patreon shout out goes out to John. Thank you so much for being a part of the GeoBreeze Travel Patreon community. So at what point did you start transitioning from teaching to nonprofit to building travel freely? I ended up going to grad school for a couple of years right after we got married and then landed the teaching gig, I guess my second stint as a teacher. And that was when the idea for Travel Freely came. My, like my brother, both grandparents, my gr- both grandfathers are all like entrepreneurs. And then my mom, my grandmother on my mom's side, like they're all teachers. So I was like blending this weird entrepreneurial like teaching thing. And I always had that desire to like try to start something. So while I was teaching and especially in the summers, I was trying to start something that would end up be travel freely, but it started actually as like a one-on-one consulting thing and not too different from what, what you do with some of Uh, your audience members now and I was much more of an introvert and like I would get overwhelmed and stressed by like managing a lot of people's needs and interests um, plus on top of the teaching gig so it was just kind of like this is this is good but it's not exactly the right fit and you know literally had the thought of like I wish there was a software that like could just kind of manage a lot of this because so much of the best advice and the normal regular things that people need to know is pretty much the same. And then where it really gets nuanced is like with your the cards that you have, being able to track them, know what to do, and then what the next cards are. I mean, kind of help hold people's hand towards that where they're almost, you know, able to make those decisions themselves, but automate the reminders. So like I would be emailing my clients, quote unquote. And when I say that, it's probably like eight to 10 people. It's not a ton of people when they had an annual fee due or a bonus deadline, you know, like I literally was tracking that for them and emailing them, giving them advice. And then just like the light bulb went off and I'd never built a website or software before, never been background. I've loved technology, but not like super savvy from an engineering or development background, but just started on that road of like, what would this look like? 
And that started with a website and a very basic kind of what would be called a web app, browser-based app. And then, you know, earlier this year, we launched a mobile app for Android and, and Apple. And so it's been a long journey uh, to get to that point. But it was very early on, like wanting to be helpful to people and start something that was cool and interesting. And that at the time, like the thing that I seemed to be able to have a little bit more knowledge and insight on than others was this points and miles thing and being able to, you know, that's what everybody was asking me, like, how are you guys going on these trips? We know you like, don't make that much money. You went to grad school, like you're a teacher, like how is this even possible? And you like almost to the point of like, people really wanting to know like, what, what are you actually doing? Like to take these great trips. So that's where it all kind of came from just sharing with friends and family and going from there. Amazing. How did you teach yourself to code or did you hire somebody to code where you kind of came up with business specifications and then said, okay, this is what it needs to do. Yeah. So I, I think early on, I realized like I am not going to be anywhere close to as good of like a developer as someone else that already has that skill set and where that's going to take a long, long time. And I think I, so I didn't ever really even go down that road of like learning for myself and um, thinking there's definitely expertise out there that's better than what I can learn and do. And so that's how I, you know, it took, I don't know, a full year, year and a half of just kind of like learning and failing and working with a few different people. Like I, I really had no idea what was like necessary, like what kind of website or technology you needed. And, you know, thankfully just learned from some people that have done that before, then also the developers themselves, like talking through it. And so that was like a huge learning curve, but also like really fascinating and interesting. And, and so just learning all that and going forward, you know, I guess kind of, not knowing what I didn't know was helpful of like how, how difficult it actually would end up being. But I think overall, like I've been really grateful that it turned out the way it did, even with the app of like, I've gotten much more savvy in terms of tech, but I'm still definitely an amateur, but I, I have very much sat in the, on the side of like the average everyday person of like, what is this website going to do for this person or this app? Like, what does it feel like? And I also I don't know, somehow we'll have like an aesthetic, just critical, critical part of me that like, if it doesn't look okay, like that bothers me. So like, I want it to be a decent looking software. The first one was very basic, but like just getting that started was, was a lot of fun. And yeah, just try almost like the snowball rolling downhill, just getting bigger and bigger learning as we go. And you know, there's all sorts of things related to business of like the lean startup or like just getting your your product out there and letting people give you feedback and just going forward. And I, at the time, I like really didn't know any of those best practices, but that was actually what I was doing because I guess I was not, it was just fun and kind of like something on the side. So I wasn't like embarrassed that it wasn't perfect or whatever. I just wanted to start helping people and figure out you know, if if there was something here. So I started small, kept getting feedback. And, you know, I think being able to look at it from a regular person's point of view has been helpful compared to, you know, just looking at other apps or websites out there all over the place, not just points of miles. Like you can tell this was like an actual web developer that created this who like does not see things as a regular person. And then others are like, wow, this person wants the experience to be really smooth or simple or something like that. For sure. So travel freely is completely free, right? There's no like premium service or anything that somebody's paying to access this. It's just free for anybody to use all of the features. Exactly. Yeah. So hundred percent free. There's, there's no like free version versus premium version. There's no like exclusive club you can join once you do whatever. It's just all completely free. Part of the, you know, the main motivation for that was trying to get as many people to use it. And if, even if we charge 99 cents, like some, you know, a lot of people probably wouldn't try it. So I've always wanted it to be free. And I think as a little bit insecure with like the whole setup at the beginning, it also gave me an excuse of like, if people didn't like it, it's like, well, it's free. I don't like, what do you want? You know, I can't give you a refund. It was totally free, but yeah. And then obviously like so many of 
people in the space and other websites like the, the credit card affiliate links are how we earn money and and support the sites and that is that's worked out well to be able to not have to charge anybody anything and be able to benefit from the other side of it with the commissions and then you know a big part of that for me is is always posting the best offers regardless of the commission that's kind of how i followed some sites early on in my own doing it was like wow i could click this link and get 20,000 more points compared to like what the bank's website is saying and so that's that's been my hope too like try to treat people as my friend and like what i would actually tell them and so there's you know there's times when completely don't make any money off certain card commissions because the better offer is is not one with a commission so that's the from like the business standpoint like that's a little bit of the balance and i think it's worked out fine because people trust like what we're putting out there and like long term they're they're using travel freely and if you know they don't if they sign up for their the best card and it doesn't earn a commission for us maybe the next time will and you know maybe they tell their friends and they know that they can trust it so that's kind of been the standpoint and then i think i've seen people like just kind of try to go after the profit in any kind of business and starting out in education and nonprofits like there's no there's no real money in profit there so i think I saw the value of, you know, helping people and serving community and whatnot. So that's how I've wanted to approach this in terms of just at the end of the day, profit is like very multi-layered. It's not just the money. It's like, are you helping people? And that's like pretty awesome to be able to help people travel to places they never thought they could or make, you know, someone recently during COVID like had to go back and forth multiple times with their spouse to see someone who was sick and they use the companion pass from Southwest and like basically kind of poured their heart out of like, this would never have been possible if we didn't have these miles. And that, that was like so cool and rewarding to, to read. And you know, that's, you know, a fun part of the motivation for doing all this. Yeah, for sure. A lot of people think that the whole point in miles game is to have those fancy business class and first class flights and everything. But sometimes you just can't afford the $500 to go see your family and mm-hmm. they're sick and, and you need to go see them. So points and miles makes that possible for everybody too. And I love that it makes travel so much more accessible to so many communities who otherwise might not be able to see their families during a hard year. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. And I think like there, we, we kind of talk a lot about the amazing kind of epic vacations people can take of like, get to Santorini or you know even Hawaii or something but like it's still all about just like maximizing your travel budget and if if it's about you know that that's what I did early on like if a friend had a wedding or like a chance to visit family like with the current with the budget I had I probably would not have gone to some of those you know traveled see friends or family in those occasions or really would have had to like make a hard decision but with points and miles, it was like never, that's never a problem. So that, that's like such a great aspect of it. And then also, if you think laterally, like maybe you do have to pay for a flight here. That's the best route. So it's a good deal. Go for it. But then the next time you save on the hotels or whatnot, and you know, you can see your family because you saved on something else. When it comes to coding the algorithm for credit card recommendations, are you just writing this out on a piece of paper and giving it a t- to a developer to say, all right, if this is their situation, like they're under five over 24, pick these cards, or how does somebody come up with that algorithm it, instead of just talking to a person to say, okay, here's here's my card recommendation. How do you codify that? Yeah, um, so I would say there's like... Uh... There's an art and a science to it, where the science is the coding, right? And then the art is kind of like the human level of what actually does is the value of this card and do people really like it? Like, is the customer service good? Like, is it hard to get this card? Do people get denied? And like, that's not necessarily something you can just card code. And maybe to back up, what you're talking about is the card genie on Travel Freely, which basically wants people add their own cards to their My Cards page which is not syncing like bank login info. It's just adding the card you have and the date you opened it. 
And then the card genie can utilize that to know what your next best card options are based on the dates and the application rules of each bank. And so the, the two pieces that I try to balance are what are the current offers? What are the value of those offers? And I actually rank the cards like myself within the software with you know some of those values built in. And I definitely err on the side of like a beginner getting started they're not going to pay $695 for an Amex Platinum, right? So I'm not, I'm not going to rank that as a super high card if I know like that's just going to make them run away and get scared, even if it is a good card and good for them. And I, I trust like the advanced person probably already knows what they want to do and that kind of thing. But the, the science part of it in terms of the algorithm is just putting in all those bank application rules. Some are very simple, like, you know, Southwest, you cannot well not so simple but you can't have any you can't have any of these cards and it has to be 24 months since you got the bonus to be eligible for the next one so then it's basically gonna you know run that through and see based on the cards you have if if it should show up or not as a recommendation and then you know there's the 524 rules where it's like does this card count or not um there's some nuances to the business cards of like the chase ones where it's not going to count, but you have to be under in order to get it approved. And so that's all what, you know, the back end of the software has so that you don't have to think about that. And basically, if you see the card on the card genie, you're eligible for it. And then from the beginning, I always wanted people to like have options. I'm always trying to make sure the card genie is as easy as possible to use. But at the end of the day, like there's still multiple options. You shouldn't just look at, well, that card's number four. This one's number five. I'm going to get number four. Like you want to make sure it really fits for you and you can you know, sort by categories, the minimum spending, those kind of things. So I think the, the goal is to show you the best possible cards you're eligible for, what the average beginner intermediate person is going to be excited to get. And then you know, trust that these are the best offers. They're not you know, three good ones. And then here's the one we make the most money on. So we're going to put it in front of you, like, you know, Credit Karma and Nerd Wallet. It's actually, you know, these are the best ones. And then you can choose. And then the third element is just like, they, people can email me and ask me, what, what do you think? Here's my situation. And I'm happy to help. So you can also just talk about their strategy. But the goal is to take so much of that, like painstaking thinking out of it, you know, before Travel Freely, define your 524 number and actually trust that it was it was correct you know there's still the human part of it of like maybe i didn't count it correctly or i got the date wrong but this one's an authorized user versus primary so and then maybe the rules on the bank changed three months ago and you don't know it so you know once the sapphire card rules changed from 24 to 48 months that was you know a huge blow but you know we can update the card genie to reflect that and you'll always know you know, what, what the rules are going to be there. Um, actually, you won't know the rules. You'll know if the card is eligible. And we're actually working on explaining that better in the app so that people know why previously it felt kind of overwhelming for people to read all those rules. But I want to give people the option if they want to know why. So we're working on that right now. Yeah, sounds good. Lots of amazing different features within Travel Freely. It's always one of my top recommended for all of my clients. And then I mention it on Instagram all the time. So definitely look in the show notes and download Travel Freely from there if you have not already. And as we're wrapping up here, Zach, what would you say is your number one piece of points and miles advice for anybody listening today? So thinking about it, I think it would be dip your toes in, get one card, hit the bonus, and travel for free. That would be the basics for me if you're just getting started. I mean, that's kind of how I got started. There's so much out there. You can get kind of paralysis of analysis. So don't do not do that. Like keep it simple and just get started and, and go from there. Sounds good. That's amazing advice. And speaking of good advice, can you give a shout out to somebody else on the internet that listeners should go follow? Sure. So Frequent Miler is kind of like, to me, like the godfather of points and miles, like always writes articles that are super interesting and has people's best interests. They always post the best offers. That's kind of how I came up with my philosophy of trying to do that as well. And so 
they always have a ton of great content and they also seem to have like great deep dives if you want to go further than just beginner intermediate and their their way of writing is pretty like simple accessible easy to understand in terms of like if you want to understand something on elite status or how to use certain points to transfer to book another flight like they they do a great job kind of breaking it down from from my perspective they're one of my favorites as well and like you said i love that they're always posting the best offers they have that on their website they were one of the very few large points blogs that mentioned the offer back in the day where if you could apply for chase half i prefer in bank you could get your annual fee waived and i feel like None of the other channels were really talking about that. There were maybe four large blogs. And even though a lot of us were mentioning it on Instagram, including my Instagram, it I feel like it just wasn't getting enough traction of if you just go in branch, you can avoid the annual fee because then it would cost people an affiliate commission. So mm-hmm. I do like frequent miler that they they're on the good, the good side of like yeah. business ethics. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And where can we find you on the internet? So the best is with the Travel Freely app, just searching Travel Freely in the app store or the play store. And then travelfreely.net is the website where you can view content or, or get started. And you know, our app is, is still browser-based and mobile. So you can, you can have both if you're at work and on your laptop, you can log in on a browser um, or you can use your phone and the, everything syncs. So Either way is good, kind of what you prefer. I'm on social a little bit. Most of the handles are I travel freely, but I am nowhere near your your level of social media prowess or, or brilliance. So I will give that as a caveat. Don't expect that from, from us yet, I guess. Thank you. And everyone, once again, go into the show notes and download the Travel Freely app or go to the website from there. Well, thank you so much, Zach, for coming on to the show today. We learned so much about how to meet those minimum spends and get into this game. Even if you have a teacher salary or a nonprofit salary, it's still very possible. And we learned so much about the different features in the Travel Freely app. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks, Julia. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast. If any of the cards mentioned in today's episode piqued your interest, please check out the links in the show notes for more information on any of the cards. Also, if you apply for a card using the links on that page, I may receive a commission too, so please and thank you. P.S. I hear the links work better in Internet Explorer or Safari, and sometimes the credit card applications tend to glitch out in Chrome. Additionally, it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe to this podcast, leave a five-star review, and share it with a friend. And if you would like to make even more travel hacking friends, please sign up for the Patreon to access our monthly masterclass hangouts. We dive deep into a particular points program each month, and you'll get to ask all of your travel hacking questions and enjoy being around other people who enjoy points and miles just as much as you and I do. If you would like an invite to the next one, head over to geobreezetravel.com hangouts to sign up to be on the invite list. Take care and happy travels.